Kamali taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Meet Tani, an eight-year-old chess prodigy winning matches and the internet. The Holy Festival is on and in full colour in India. We take you to Russia where this guy is getting his bare necessities at an airbase. And why is this cat wilding out in Istanbul? We'll tell you in today's Animals Doing Stuff. top of our newsfeed, Tani. He's a little boy from Nigeria who has achieved something remarkable in the United States. And the internet has been a key to his success from helping him practice his craft to making his achievement go viral to donating hundreds of thousands of dollars to him and his family. His is a story which stands out and will hopefully make you smile. What I like most about chess is deep thinking. Deep thinking. Yeah, I mean, like deep. He's got a great energy. He's eager. He's um, a nice young fella. He's, he's playful. He's kind. Um, very social. Um, engaged, always uh, trying to acquire knowledge. Hard working, always wants to be the first one in and the last one out. Always wants to, to do more and to be better and to work harder. I can't go there. No. on Yatani. Let's have a look at some of the other things that have caught our eye on social media. Now the rescue effort for those affected by Cyclone Idai in Mozambique has reached a critical point. Aid workers say that the city of Bera, which was almost obliterated by the storm, has at most three days of water left. The Indian Navy has dispatched three ships to help. At least a thousand people are dead, but that toll is definitely going to increase. Young Yoon Young is a K-pop star who has admitted to sexually assaulting women and has given a public apology. It's pretty common in South Korean culture when a public figure is caught doing something wrong. This is what he said. I'm very sorry I've committed an unforgivable crime. I admit all the allegations. In today's hearing, I will not protest any charges of the investigators and humbly accept the court's decision. Again, I deeply apologize for victims who have suffered because of me, those who have been harmed by baseless rumors, and everyone who has showed affection for me. The Aussie baller Ben Simmons shouted out Eggboy, aka William Connolly, by writing Eggboy on his sneaks during his last game in the NBA. He posted it on Instagram and called him an Australian legend. Now, Eggboy became famous for this, smashing an egg on the head of a racist Australian senator called Fraser Anning, who said that immigrants were to blame for the murders of 50 people at a mosque in New Zealand that was carried out by a white supremacist. Now, India's most popular video game has been banned in one state there because authorities say it's dangerous to the public good. The decision has led many to question if politicians in the world's biggest democracy really have their focus where it needs to be. The game's official name is Player Unknown's Battleground, but it's better known as PUBG. Here's Nia. 
what's the worst that could happen if you're playing an online game on your phone? Perhaps you run out of lives or you don't have enough battery left uh, during a crucial level. But if you live in the Indian state of Gujarat and you're caught playing the game PUBG, you could be arrested. The state government has said that that particular game incites violence among youngsters and leads to criminal behavior. Uh, a leader of the ruling BJP has called it a demon in every house and the state has uh, banned that game uh, since the first week of March and several students have been arrested uh, because of playing that game as well. You've got Sharat commenting on that saying you won't ever see an actual criminal getting arrested as fast as those kids were in Gujarat. So PUBG is clearly a bigger issue than other heinous crimes in the state of Gujarat. Rao Srinivas uh, putting up this meme which says a lot. You've got two criminals in a jail cell. This guy says I came in because I killed a man. What about you? The student says well I played PUBG in Gujarat and this man then scoots away from him. Dhruv Rathi saying, now the government will lecture us on what mobile games we can or cannot play. The government is not a parent of every child in the country. Uh, NSUI a youth body says, uh, is this really an optimal use of police resources? Doesn't the police have something better to do than harass uh, students? They've called it state-sponsored bullying. Uh, you've got uh, Wilson saying this, well, India has got problems such as poverty, unemployment, illiteracy, uh, poor infrastructure, but the Gujarat government going for the lowest hanging fruit they're arresting students for playing a mobile game. Some like Parina, though, are uh, backing this ban. They say this has been done because teenagers uh, teenagers are turning into criminals, are becoming destructive. Uh, she's citing the example of a teenager who withdrew uh, some money uh, from his father's account just to purchase weapons and uh, other things for the game online. Uh, PUBG did issue a statement on this, uh, saying this game is merely meant for entertainment and should be enjoyed in a healthy and responsible environment. They say they're working on the introduction of a healthy gameplay system for India where there are reports of uh, students being addicted to this, saying where we likely limit playtime for underaged players but at the same time calling this ban by the state government of Gujarat completely unnecessary. And we'll stay in India but these next activities are definitely government sanctioned. The huge festival of Holi is well underway. Here's Karen. It's an image of India many of us recognize from advertising campaigns and music festivals. Also known as the Festival of Colors, the Hindu festival of Holi marks the arrival of spring and is celebrated by splashing friends and family with different colors, powders and water. The ancient festival can be traced to a 7th century Sanskrit play called Ratnavali, written by the Indian emperor Harsha. Witness the beauty of the Great Cupid Festival, which excites curiosity as the townsfolk are dancing at the touch of brownish water throne. Everything is colored yellowish red and rendered dusty by the heaps of scented powder blown all over. Hindus believe that the throwing of colors has roots in the love story of Radha and Krishna. Krishna, a Hindu deity normally depicted with dark blue skin, complained to his mother about Radha's lighter complexion. She suggested smearing Radha's skin with paint, which is where the custom of covering loved ones with colors comes from. Holi is celebrated in India in different regions of the country. A few days before the main Holi celebrations, men in the villages of Barsana sing provocative songs to gain the attention of women, who then hit them with bamboo sticks called lattes. Others try to catch sweets known as ladas, which are flung from the terrace of temples. Hindu communities throughout Asia also participate. In Pakistan, people are choosing to mark Holi with a message of solidarity. This is a festival of joy and colors, and we are celebrating it. But we dedicate today's festivities to those who died in New Zealand recently. We, the minority of Pakistan, have not forgotten them and express our solidarity with them. OK, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. 
now in another in a first a, a woman has won the Abel Prize in Mathematics Karen Uhlenbeck is a professor from the University of Texas and she got the award for her work in partial differential equations the awards panel say her research has led to revolutionary advances in the at the intersection of maths and physics the relatives of this man, the man in the corner, Papa Renti, is suing Harvard University so she can have her great, 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 great grandfather's picture. It was taken in 1850 and used by racist pseudoscientists to propagate the myth of black inferiority. Harvard have repeatedly refused to give it back and now find themselves faking, facing legal proceedings. The suit says Harvard is profiting from the image and images like it. The woman suing is called Tamara Lania and getting back the picture was part of fulfilling her mother's dying wish to make sure that Papa Renti was properly remembered. Renti was dragged into the studio and uh, they took the only thing that hadn't been taken yet from Renty, and that was his image, because he could not own property. And, and since 1850, Harvard has had some role in that. And they continue to keep the image and use it to, for profit and prestige. This case is important because it will test the moral climate of this country and force this country to reckon with its long history of racism. And specifically, this case will force Harvard to look at their complicity as it relates to slavery. And a giant sunfish has washed up on a beach in Australia, and the pictures of it have gone viral for obvious reasons. This one is six feet long and was found by some fishermen in Kudong National Park. Now, sunfish can grow to as big as 13 feet and weigh more than two and a half tons. This is the second one which has gone viral in recent weeks. Another one washed up on a beach in California at the beginning of March. Now, that one was way away from its normal habitat, leaving scientists baffled as to how we got there. Now, a Russian bear has made a home for itself at an airbase just outside of Moscow, and the people who work there have welcomed their furry comrade with cautiously open arms. When you are constantly in touch, you understand what is on his mind. When he wants to wrestle you, play around. The fact of good-natured communication does lots of good. This beast is not aggressive. He understands his strength. Look at the pals. They are relaxed. He was dumped at an airfield when he was a little cub. We suppose he was one and a half or two months old, as bears are usually born in January or towards the end of February. He was smaller than a cat back then. He was the size of a kitten or a puppy. Animals doing stuff today is not that one, but it's a gem from right here in Istanbul. Now, this video is from outside a supermarket in the city, and this cat seems to have some serious beef with a certain kind of Istanbulite, namely dogs and men. It just goes for it. It hilariously leaps at them when they try to enter the store, or even when they're just walking past, but is totally chill should a woman or child try the same. Now, vets say it's, she's doing it to protect her litter of kittens. I think she just doesn't like dudes and dogs, which I'm sure you'll agree is perfectly reasonable. 
And that will be a lot from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. I'm at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on Twitter and YouTube. And you can follow me on Instagram, follow, subscribe, and add. See you again tomorrow.